everybody. Welcome to another episode of Age of Quarantine. My name is Chris Enriquez. You can follow me at Chris Enriquez Drums, and I play in the band Spotlights at Spotlights Music, and I uh, work at Revolver Magazine at Revolver Mag. I uh, have an exciting guest tonight, John Famiglietti, very Italian. Hope I said that right. Um, from the band Health, one of the most forward-thinking, progressive, interesting bands that I have heard in recent time. I am so in love with their album, uh, Slave of Fear. And uh, did I say that right? Well, if I screwed it up, I'm sorry. Yeah, I said it right, Slaves of Fear. <laughs> uh, I wanna thank the good folks at Loma Vista for helping me get this interview going. I wanna thank all of you for always supporting the show and St. Vitus. And uh, we're gonna talk to John about his band Health and how they came up in the uh, L.A. noise scene, how they got started, how they got to where they are today. And we're going to talk about his life and what brought music into it. So that being said, I'm going to shut the fuck up and get John from Health on the screen. <clears throat> Let the internet do its thing. In the meantime, hope you're all doing well out there. Hey, hey what's Hello. going on, man? Hey, I'll turn it up. This is weird. Let me turn, let me turn your own music off in the background. Oh, that's cool. Like, that's like my mom. When my I, intro. If I come to visit my mom, she'll be like, do you want me to put your music on? I'm like, no, that's fucking weird. <laughs> well, over here at the uh, Age of Quarantine show, I try to do my own version of an intro, talking about who I'm going to speak with, and I get some music playing in the background. It's good to see you, man. Yeah, it's good to see you, too. How you doing? Good, good, good. It's been a bit. I think the last time we saw each other was on the uh, West Coast when Revolver interviewed you guys, which was a last minute thing when I ran into you at uh, Aftershock Festival. Aftershock, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. The the drinking area. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, dude, you want to do an interview with Revolver? You're like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one was. There was uh, all the interview uh, tables were like Rock 101, 105, Walk 101, whatever, Rock 101, whatever. And it's like, Terry, if you ain't got anything on the radio, they're not talking to you. Dude, yeah, no, it's such a weird, it's such a weird world when you enter those festivals and, and you're backstage in that environment. Um, you know, obviously you guys have done a lot of big things, but I'm sure um, even, you know, coming from the DIY noise rock scene, it's got to be, you know, I came up in the punk rock hardcore scene in New York. So to be backstage and see like, you know, Rob Zombie walk past me with a 10 foot monster, that's not something you see every day. You know yeah, <laughs> Um, uh, that 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 fest is weird because like I like, like one of my earliest concerts was like Ozfest L one, and then right. I was there and like it wasn't like the same lineup but it was like a lot of the same shit from the same era. It was like, this weird, fucked up like deja vu. Except I'm yeah. older, you know. I feel you, man. Well, how is um how how's the pandemic been treating you and uh, you know how's it affected the band's schedule? Uh no schedule, zero schedule. Uh, we canceled well, yeah. three tours. Though, in the grand scheme of things, it's not really that bad. As long as I don't check the news, I'm just like, home more. You know, it's not that bad. Yeah, I mean, it would be no. nice to have gone on tour, but it's, it's not horrible. I mean, if I was in some apartment right now, I'd lose, be losing my fucking mind. But I, I got a lot of space, a lot of entertainment to roam. Oh, that's awesome, man. I'm glad to hear that. L.A. is awesome like that because you're in L.A., right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not so bad. It's not yeah. So bad. It's warm. Uh, yeah. I think people, if you live in New York or something, it's like probably pretty rough. <laughs> Fuck, man. Hey, before we get started, can you give your full name? Because I, I, I just don't know if I got it right when I was introducing you. Oh, uh, I, I just say John Famiglietti. You could say like Famiglietti or something. I said but... Famiglietti when I was introducing you. Yeah, it's fine. The G's silent. I wouldn't expect anyone to know that. Now, are you obviously uh, part Italian? Uh, yeah, half. I'm half Italian, half Korean. Nice. nice. Okay. Yeah. That's what I, I was like, wait a second. Um, that's awesome. I always, I'm, I'm Filipino, so I always get the, uh, the confusion. Like, is he Chinese or is he Spanish? Or what, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, what, what's up with that guy? Is he an Eskimo? <laughs> um, I hear it all, man. Um, well, I'm glad that you're, uh, that you're doing well. And, um, you know, a lot of times I tell people on the show before we get started, we have an hour or so. When, when people say, oh, God, don't tell us your life story, that would not apply to this conversation. We want to talk about um, how you found music, how health started, and all that stuff. So, um, so is that cool if we kind of take it back and uh, and dig in a little bit? Sure, sure. I don't have anything to do. <laughs> All right. Um, I see a couple people are um, commenting. Thanks for watching. We got a good amount of people on. And uh, there's a question mark box on the bottom of the screen. 
the best way to submit questions is if you use the question box and I'll eventually get to them about half past the hour. Um, John, uh, talk about, uh, you know, are you originally from LA? No, San Diego. Okay, so you're from the West Coast though, uh, and, and San Diego certainly had no shortage of amazing music and art. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, when and how did music enter your life and what was it like where you were from? Uh, I didn't really grow up with any kind of like, I've like immigrant parents, like we didn't like, I didn't like get into, I missed a lot of movies and a lot of music and stuff. And then I made a friend who sent me a, a cassette in the mail and one side was Dead Kennedys and one side was Sonic Youth. Wow. And uh, I didn't really connect the Sonic Youth side at first, but when I heard the Dead Kennedy side, like, it was like that, you know, that moment where like you connect to music and I'm like, what, I feel so crazy right now. Like that really changed. <laughs> like now I make, like, I didn't become a fan of music until I heard that. And I was pretty late in the game, you know? That's an incredible uh, intro to music. And I could understand, you know, Sonic Youth, depending on what era or song you're hearing is not going to really translate right away. Yeah, it, it took me a little bit. Eventually I got into it, but like, you know, for the first thing, like Dead Kennedys was pretty immediate, you know? Like as yeah, a kid, fuck yeah. I like something energetic and stuff too. Now, do you remember, was, was it, was it a, a, you know, one of, the, was it Holiday of Cambodia, the first thing you heard or something like that? No, he made a mix, like, you know, like stop, record, stop, record in, in order. And he started with Police Truck. Ah, oh, okay. And I thought it was pretty, no, 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 never mind. He started with Terminal Preppy, then went to Police Truck. That was it. But it was like a, basically a best of that he, that he curated. That's fucking rad. I love that. I love that. Because a lot of people, you know, um, how, how old are you? Oh, shit, I'm 36, bro. <laughs> okay. Well, no, no, no. Dude, I'm, I'm 39, dude. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot, a lot. Well, that's even more impressive, actually, because a lot of people our age get started on, you know, kind of more typical. Like, I started out on um, New Wave and Heavy Metal, uh, mm -hmm. which is still cool, but that was a little more typical in the 80s. So to get started on Sonic Youth and, um, and Dead Kennedys is wild. Um, yeah, I was kind of like a... a kind of a hipster shithead from the beginning because that was my intro and then he came over and he started getting me music and he told me i don't know where he got this information but he told me at the time that stooges funhouse and sonic youth daydream nation were considered by all critics all around the world to be the two greatest rock albums of all time like most people say funhouse and some people say daydream nation so i bought funhouse as my first cd and i listened to it every day like 20 times a day and i'm like i'm listening to the best rock album that was ever made wow and I get older and older i'd be like I pick up like Rolling Stone 500 greatest albums and I'm like 18 years old. I'm like, they don't even fucking mention this album. Like who the fuck said this? <laughs> so like, yeah. my whole perspective of music had been completely fucking, uh, had been fucked up the whole time. Cause I was under the impression that that was considered the greatest rock album of all time. Those are some of the greatest rock records of all time for sure. Um, and you know, it's always fun house or raw power, but you know, that's, that's amazing, man. And, and so, and you get some compliments here uh, from uh, who's this over here saying that the botch man says, you're lying. You look like you're only halfway through your twenties. Oh, thank you. That's very sweet. The Susan Asian Jones. jeans, man. We're very yeah. lucky. I've, um, I've been putting them through hell, but they seem to be working out. <laughs> I know. Tell me about it. Two years sober, but all the fucking cocaine and, and whiskey that I had in my life. I, sh I, sh I shouldn't still have black hair or hair at all. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, that's all right. My parents aren't watching this. So um, when did you actually start? playing music and what were your first instruments how did that happen uh i got a uh, this really bullshit ass guitar and uh with no equipment like no amp and i'm like ah just kind of like randomly playing it and then my cousin called me one day and he's like hey i have this bass do you want it i was like yeah and then he drove it over and he had like a little shitty amp and then i like looked at the back of the cd and i did the math and i'm like if i play this bass i know like 10 guys playing guitars like i bet i could make a fucking band like right now so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I call people like, let's do a band. Uh, and so like, that took forever. I had like a pretty shitty high school band didn't really do anything. They're like uh, once, twice, like once outside, once the school. But uh, the real thing that happened was I basically not planned on making a band, but then I saw the uh, Oops the Tour. So it was Locust, uh, Lightning Bolt, Airborne Radar, Blood Brothers, and Harkonnen at one Fuck show. Yeah. Gene Center right next to my house. Uh, this is how this is going to date me. I was working on fucking Blockbuster Video at the time. And I went there, and like that show, I was like, "Oh man, I'll I'll do a band right now." This is fucking holy awesome. shit. That's yeah. a fucking show. That's a San Diego show right there. Yeah, that was. And that was it. I was like, the show is so incredible, it's so mind blowing, you know. That's interesting. My, I love. I I grew up uh, listening to Rocket from the Crypt and Drive Like Jehu, and obviously worship. Uh, you know everything those guys. Were you into that stuff back then as well? I was. I was really though, really into like Locust, Three One G, GSL. Like that was. 
I yeah. had all his wacky ass seven inches. Um, I did have I did have Java Jehu record, and I saw Hot Snakes a few times. I think that was more the era I was, but I was I was really into the Locust and shit like that. We um we actually had oh my god why am I fucking blanking oh Justin Pearson was on the show um a couple weeks ago yeah um, there's a great a, there's a moment in high school and I was uh going to go to like a uh, film school and I, I cornered a JP at a show and I was like hey man I'm going to film school you know you're never releasing this live DVD and I could really help you guys film he's like oh we already filmed their thing I was like oh. All right, no much. <laughs> <laughs> I, for, I forget how fucking people worship that guy um, until like yeah, until you get to San Diego. Yeah, That's San Diego in a nutshell, man. So, um, so, so you you're talking about how you started performing and you go to these shows that you kind of jumped to my next question, which was like how you discovered underground music, but it happened pretty quickly for you. Yeah, uh, that was like, we started going to shows. I started going to Che Cafe. Uh, we would drive up to LA to go to The Smell. And that was like, you know, I've only like the only big shows I'd ever been to. I went to concerts pretty late in my life. So I, I like I literally went to Fish, not really for the music because we knew we could get stuff there. Then I saw fucking, I went to OzFest 01 and I saw like Tool on the Lateralis tour. And then from that point on, it was, you know, really, really underground shows and stuff like that. Yeah, man, that was a good time for, 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 for music, especially the music that uh, we're talking about. I mean, you know, you could still see Tool at a gigantic venue but in general and you know me and you have seen some serious shows at festivals and stuff but yeah. um you know back then it was fucking a different world you see well this here's the biggest difference between back then to now and it's literally a technological one before the line array pa was invented shows were so much more fucked up sounding because they were redistorting redistorting they could only get like they're to get that loud they're just cranking it so the whole thing's just fucked up so seeing two alive then it's like bass everything was like like piercing fucking distorting and so like when i saw them at aftershock it was really disorienting because like my memory of this is a completely different thing because the pa is <laughs> so clearer you know absolutely and, man and even like bands like i saw like the fucking strokes or something in like 2002 and i'd never heard of them and i saw them and i thought they were this heavy as fuck ripping band and i picked the cd and i was like what the fuck it's because the pa was distorting it so much i was like i thought they were like the heaviest fucking band dude know? that's actually a really good point no one is no one on camera or off, off camera has ever made that point which is funny because I, I i felt the same way when i was a kid i saw howard jones the new wave artist uh -huh. if you remember him but he um I remember leaving that show thinking it was so fucking loud and heavy, but he's like this like solo new wave guy, you know, which was great, but it was, it was just so much heavier probably for the reason that you're just mentioning right now. Yeah. Here. I don't know. I could, cause I, my hearing is pretty fucked from obvious, for obvious reasons, but I sort of Christ shows are quieter now. Like there's the line right PA where it's like way clear. You don't need to distort it again, but I think it's also quieter. Could be wrong though. Could be wrong. <laughs> um, how old were you when you started playing music? Uh, I guess I started pretty quick. I, I went to this pretty bullshit ass fly by night film school in LA and I was really obsessed with the local scene, the smell, and I was going there all the time and I was like, I need to find a way to get, get to the scene. And I didn't know anyone. I didn't really have any fucking friends in LA either because I moved there like I, the age you would be in college. So like, I was just fucking twiddling my thumbs. Like, I don't even know what the fuck to do. Um, so, uh, so when I met, uh, I actually worked at fucking Guitar Center. Oh, uh, same, dude. That's, yeah. <laughs> and I, I met Jake there. Uh, they hadn't heard of the smeller and that stuff. And they, they asked me about maybe starting a band. I was like, yeah, man, we got we to we get in the scene. We got to you know, join what's going on. It's a really exciting time, we felt, in, uh, in L.A. And that's, that, and that's the thing. And then we had to go through a weird uh, situation of, like, trying to get into a show, like, to, to, like, play one. But we started playing this venue called Il Corral, which is this super legendary DIY venue in one room and you could drink there and it was super legal and they had a rope swing in the center and so it would get really fucking rowdy and violent because people would get so drunk then you'd grab the rope swing and just kick off the wall and just kick someone and like take out the dude in the band <laughs> and it was fucking awesome so sweet sweet you you you, yeah you mentioned some some rad venues that I remember I went to Shea Cafe back in the day and um that doesn't exist anymore right and um oh it's Che gone i haven't been in like we went to che like a say we've like played a save the che thing that was like 10 years ago well yeah I, oh i don't know i was asking but yeah like yeah, these are old school venues that um that were around for a very long time i hope there's any venues around after uh after this moment after 2020 so telling me man i mean this yeah. uh, i don't have you guys played saint vitus no we've uh, uh we talked about it but um, I'm like, I couldn't get a straight answer. I'm like, how big is that PA? Because the, the modern health, like, 
we need a lot of we want we need subs we need a lot of guns you know a lot of uh fancy fancy shit but not fancy you know what i'm saying we need a big spa i don't know what it is i don't know if it's just like is this just a metal bar i've actually never been i heard it's sweet but oh you got to come down here sometime man we, we we definitely uh would love to have you and you know uh, i don't want to self-promote too much but it's a great place and it, you know it's kind of filled the void for when cb's uh was gone i feel like we uh you know a lot of people have given us that credit and it's been really nice so we'd love to have health here sometime yeah, I've watched a bunch of videos of like bands that I like, like their show at St. Vitus. So yeah. that's the main thing. Like, a, like so many bands that I haven't seen live, I've watched their St. Vitus show on YouTube. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, I saw you for the first time. Um, you know, obviously you have a big audience here in Brooklyn, uh, which is uh, no surprise. I saw you play with Youth Code at Elsewhere. Um, oh, that was great. Uh, fantastic. You guys killed it. It's the first time I saw you. I just got the record. I was a latecomer to health. And, um, you know, it exceeded my uh, expectations. And I'm a fucking picky motherfucker. But you guys, uh, um, your sound resonates with me because of the mixture of um, sort of like genres, I guess. It's kind of like blurring the lines between a lot of things. But before we go there, when and how did health start? Uh, so from that. I met the I met Jake and our ex bandmate Jupiter. Uh, they they had gone to college together and uh, he, he had a practice space, and I went and met them, played with them, and they were playing a totally different kind of music. And I was like, we didn't even know we were gonna play. And I was like, hey guys, I don't, I don't know, like I, I really want to join this. What's going on? The smell? We need it. Let's do something kind of crazier. And they were on board for it, so we kind of threw all that stuff out. And we started doing uh, new shit and just trying to take whatever show we could until we like finally got our way into that Il Corral venue with the Sean Carnage Monday Nights, which is a really weird time and eventually went to the smell and then playing through the scene more and more and then the uh, the smell is a huge part of, of of like sort of like where the band came up and and um, yeah and grew you want to talk about i've heard a lot about that venue and i've never been there from actually so you know people. sorry even before we played the smell we because we all read fucking uh like our band could be your life you know the, the, that yeah. shit. so we like basically before we even played the smell by about show three we did a like a uh, West Coast tour with uh, this um, like I guess you'd call them post hardcore band like some friends Jake had from uh, like way back in high school and they had like a they kind of sound Fugazi esque and they they were very much in, like the hardcore metalcore scene and we played like tons of basements and like Reno and like an apartment building in and in, uh, in Tempe and immediately like within like three months of forming the band we had like a seven inch and did like a West Coast DIY tour and then we were just like really just in it. Uh, in the uh, just in the lifestyle basically and so like every from that point like every four months we were doing a really fucking jank basement tour book through myspace you know um, yeah right that was a deal i mean you never knew what you're gonna get either um you know that was sort of uh an interesting time to get through and and it becomes so much more rewarding when you do end up at your level playing uh festivals and every you know we'll get into that but um it's very cool reading your history Obviously, I was a late comer to the band, but I know that scene very well coming up in it myself um, and, you know, sleeping on stages and, you know, f telling people on stage, hey, can we sleep at someone's house tonight? That whole lifestyle. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's fun. I mean, I wouldn't do it now. It'd be fucking weird to be old. But if we're young, <laughs> Trust me, yeah. Um, now, uh, could you tell us a little bit about, you know, maybe you could talk about the smell a little bit and, and what that venue meant to you, what it was like, what it meant to the, the the noise scene because again that that comes up quite a bit when your band is mentioned is uh how important that scene and um and and, and environment was to the band yeah i mean it's super sweet it's just like you know it's a place it's all ages shows tons of scenes are built around it. it's gone through like a million generations the only thing that's the constant is the owner jim who really does this sort of some weird community service because he was uh, you know a scene kid way back in his time and like that was so important having a place for kids to, like make their own shows and like you know, if you go there now, the music playing there now is totally different than it was before. Like, it's, it's just like, it's like a place, I don't know, almost like a community center. Not really. It's fucking cool, though. The vibe is cool. It's very oppressive. It's a really weird sound. It really lives up the hype when you go there. Like, it, it kind of gives this gravitas to what's happening there. And, and that's why we recorded our first album there, because of the sound. We want to, like, be a part of the thing. And because we can do it for free. Oh, there you go. Um, it sounds It sounds very similar, actually, to how... Um you know, how St. Vitus has uh, sort of treated uh, the, the club and for the bands that play there regularly in terms of, uh, you know, during the daytime, there'll be bands that come and record 
sometimes for free, depending on who it is. Um, so that's cool. I love that. I love just hearing about the parallel universe in the underground culture, because, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, at least to me and probably anyone watching this, if you're on a St. Vitus bar channel, um, it's a, it's, it, it's a credibility thing that kind of makes a band or, or the, it just makes a band more exciting when you know they went through that, you know, because because it, it shows the, the hard work and passion when you have to fucking go to these places and, hey, can we record for free, you know, and, you know, you're doing, you're building culture with your friends, you know, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, it's, it, it's good. It was very memorable. I wouldn't do it again. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> um, for, for, you know, this is a weird thing to be asked. I'm a musician, too, so I get it. But. How would you describe your guy's sound to somebody that might be totally green to it? I, I hate categories, but it's an interesting one. I'll tell you, my take was like, it's got new wave. It's a little goth. It, I, I really like sneaker pimps, and I hear that a little bit. You know, it's got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, well, okay, here's my personal answer. I'm like, why the fuck would I tell you? Just go on, like, your Spotify. You can just listen to it, you know, like, less time. However, you know, other people have said, like, uh, one guy says, Godspeed plus New Order. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, a guy said you sound like Stabbing Westward. I was like, okay. Um, yeah, it, it's, yeah, it doesn't, it's not, a, it's a blessing and a curse. It's not easily put into a, a genre, which definitely seriously slows how much you can grow, but also keeps you around longer. You're not attached to a fad or anything that falls out of style, you know? Well, whatever it is, it's fucking great. I just was interested hearing your take on it because it's, um, the best bands are the bands you can't describe, that you can't put into a box, um, you know? Um, yeah. Sometimes. Maybe, I don't know. I do like a lot of really good, like classic bands or whatever genre but yeah totally well i'll take that back there are some bands that you mentioned yeah. fugazi when fugazi came out it was very hard to explain what that was to, to totally somebody. totally yeah but um yeah i go both ways there with that um so okay you 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 guys first gained i was reading your wikipedia um you guys first gained attention through your crystal castles remix how yeah. did that come about talk about um what was happening there so that was seriously, you know, my space. The shit was just kind of, for a younger listener, it's kind of fertile time. It was a MySpace era for bands because suddenly, like, all these underground bands suddenly had this, like, really big platform. It was really easy to find bands, and people were really, really active, and we were booking all the shows through it. Uh, and MySpace was the main reason it got popular was just for music. So everyone on there were kids, like, looking for music. The Crystal Castles were sort of uh, coming up and being hyped. We were super into it, and we just hit them up on a message like, Hey, would you guys do a, like uh, a split, a split seven, or like a remix? And they're like, "Yeah, we'll do both." And that song, by chance, ended up being like the song that broke them in the UK and catapulted them from this really big band. And then also, like, uh, it was yeah, you know, so this this you know hit in, in the in the United Kingdom, and that gave us like this way outsized amount of attention when we started, especially for being especially our first album was pretty atonal. Like, you know, we we're basically selling like some band that's at the smell, but we got like endless coverage and got booked on all these festivals got to do a lot of fancy stuff because of that connection you know yeah that's that's an interesting one if you have a unique the band has a unique sound and a unique story which i'm fascinated by and i just love i, I i'm interested and i love hearing that it's it's uh you know especially you know just to let people know that the whole era that you were coming out of and how all that stuff worked um what in your opinion and this is a strange question i, I i'm a drummer i come from more of a rock world um, you know, I don't, um, I love electronic music, but what in your opinion makes a good remix or how do you even go about putting a good remix together? You know, remixes, I gotta say for the most part suck and we didn't think they were great, necessarily great, but in the two thousands, uh, the blog house era, whatever the fuck you want to call it, they just like just daily every day. There's just some remix and it was fucking phenomenal. And it became this weird thing where people are just like, I don't know what it was in the water, just this incredible pool of talent of people like producing these great, really innovative remixes that weren't just like club version it wasn't like you know growing up i don't know late in the late 90s your opinion of a remix would be like the bush remixed album and you're like this fucking sucks <laughs> so, um, yeah. so like that was like it was just this real this thing so it was also this sort of like trojan horse so much of the band has been trying to trojan horse us into places where we can go and so i was like all right no one will listen to this band but someone could remix us and we could be on this cool blog and then we'd be in some you know hipsters uh itunes and so that sort of like because of the Crystal Castles one, all these people were down to do it, and uh, I was on the internet all fucking day anyway. I was, I was finding all these great people who would do it, and they, you know, I saw that first uh, remix album. It's super dated now, but it's uh, really good, you know, and everything's super. It's really well done. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 interesting too because I feel like it's not an easy 
thing to take another piece of music and make it appealing for someone else to like. I to mean, here's the, they, they did all the work. I just we did we just picked. I mean, you know, people are like we like obviously like cho produce like chose the right people put them in order but like you know those disco records the first two it's like we didn't do it they did all the work that these are great they're great producers great musicians you know absolutely yeah you guys work with a lot of great engineers and producers and and, and that's why your records sound the way they do um and i like i said with my intro uh, slaves of fear which we'll get to later on um is such a standout for me when i put it on i was like god damn i was i needed a record like this um thanks man great driving record um <laughs> Um, so, um, you got a big break opening for Nine Inch Nails. Um, how did you get on that tour? And when, when, what's, and you know, what, what is that feeling like when you, um, are coming from a DIY culture? I had the same thing, but I, my band Spotlights one day got a tour with, with Deftones and I went from like a small club to that and I was like, holy shit. Like, so talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I bet your experience is probably the same as mine, where um, when, you know, we were basically used to, like, destroying audiences in these small-ass DIY rooms playing on the ground. Like, our first album, the reason why it sounds so strange, it was literally written to play, like, at the smell or someone basement. It's supposed to be, like, being the best band in that format. It's like, I told David Byrne, watch that fucking TED Talk about how music is made for the spaces played, but whatever. <laughs> so we were we were pretty, like, used to being this, like, as we felt great live band and then uh when you we went on this like to play a hockey arena opening for nine inch nails it was very apparent what how different music would need to be not just sonically how the songs were written to to work in this fucking massive arena and so you're like oh like all these you know that's why music's like this in these places so and the, the playing arena is very disorienting because it's like it's pretty sweet you know like we're like this is fucking tight we're gonna open for nine inch nails but like, you know, there's, there's like all these thousands, and thousands of people. So you're like, oh, you think it's like faceless? No, it's not. Like, you can just hear that dude and you can see that dude like 400 rows back. So this dude just like, fuck you, motherfucker. You're like, that guy hates it. You know, like you could really, you could tell who it was. It was fucking hilarious. You know? It's a huge challenge, like you said, too. When you, It's intimidating, not for the obvious reason. You know, it's like, I mean, and then like you said, I can kind of relate. It's like when you get the news, it's like, holy shit, this is awesome. And then when you get through the celebratory part with your bandmates, you're like, shit, we got to bring it. And then you realize, because I've seen this with Nine Inch Nails specifically, I've seen Dillinger Escape Plan back in the day open up for them and Soundgarden. I've seen Coheed when they were still a smaller band. And and, and what happens is it, it, if it's outside, it's during the daylight, which is also the same thing about festivals with your music is not, you know, correct me if I'm wrong. It's not really meant for, uh, you know, daylight, sun, vibes and then you get you're looking at people buying popcorn and hot dogs and shit so you're like how do we bring it and get these people to not hate us because they just want to watch nine inch nails you know so yeah. it's a daunting task i mean that's the thing really i felt like for the first 20 minutes if we could only play for 20 minutes would have been right. great it's like what is this well that's weird that's a little loud oh great i'm watching nine inch nails but they're like Yo, you got to play for an hour and like we didn't even have like we play for us to play an hour at the time was every single piece of material we could ever muster plus a little bit of dilly dallying and it's like at some point you know like all day you've been waiting it's the greatest moment in your life you want to see nine inch nails in fucking uh jacksonville and these fucking assholes <laughs> are taking an hour of this fucking avant shenanigans up there you're like fuck these kids you know i totally get it but it's funny you know it's, it's a great it was a great experience and nine inch nails and trend were like couldn't be nicer or cooler or more yeah. better, like really go out of their way to be cool which is fucking shocking like it was pretty pretty shocking to us you know that's fantastic and you carried that on through your uh, band because when i first met you i don't know if you remember this but you guys were very nice i had an umbrella and it was raining you're like oh do you want us to put it backstage for you come back here you're like uh, yeah super yeah, nice got, guys got, got good experience well the diy scene everyone's pretty cool and then i think that really changed that kept the experience of, with with uh, nails too was like a pen because talking to other people who've had big tours that is not the normal the normal way things go you know that, yeah. that left a real big impression on us how did um yeah you learn from the band for sure but do you um how did how did you how did the audience accept you on that tour? You know, according to the other we did apparently we did the best out of all the bands they brought on that leg. We got wow. a lot of booze, but uh, what I would say is any fan who discovered us then has literally stayed a fan from those shows who was actually into it literally until now. There's still even any show today. And for all the years, some guy will come up to the merch booth because I'm usually doing merch because it's just a thing to do. And they'll have a nail shirt. And they're like, hey, I saw you in South Carolina 
super long ago and they've stuck with it. So it's like a really, uh, really great, uh, like fan base, I'd say. That's awesome, man. I'm glad that worked out. And obviously it did because, you know, look at, you know, the band has um, really grown since then. I'm going to take some questions uh, from the audience. And um, hey, uh, John, if you don't mind, uh -huh. I'm gonna step away while you answer one of the questions. So feel free to talk longer. I just have to get something at the door and I'll be right back. Oh, sure, sure. I'll get sure. you no, a good question. Error, you're going gonna, you're gonna to tell me and then I'll say it. Okay, let's see if we have a good one here. Okay, you could elaborate on this. This is going to buy me some time, but um, at just J O three one best tour memories. I'll be back in two seconds. Best tour memories. Yep. Uh, I think my favorite. I don't know. I got a lot. It's it's a, it's a fun life. I don't know. We did this tour of China in twenty eleven, that was like all paid for. It's fucking amazing. I don't know, I might need something a little more specific. <laughs> I'll be right back, sorry. Okay, don't worry. Seven tour memories, keep going. What's up? Curious about Disco 4 collaboration process. Um, a lot of them we've been able to do in person, but obviously with quarantine, the later ones have been all email, and that's also why they've taken longer. But we are done with part one now, though we haven't officially announced it. But it'll be coming out pretty soon, as long as the label allows us to do it. Sorry, just J O three one. Be right back. Sorry, I'm almost there. Oh no worries, man. How's everyone doing? Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. We are releasing. We got to put a single out first. That's the label wants. All right, here we go. Thanks for sharing that memory. I could hear you, but I just had to step away for a sec. Okay, so um, you guys, well, let's. Well, actually, I I don't want to just ignore everybody else. There's a couple more here. Oh, okay. That's a good question here. At Earth one intruders how did you guys get into doing video game scores so i have no uh, there's no logical reason that it happened much like the nine nails then i i think what happened is uh trent or someone with their kind of like red pitchfork thought it was a good idea with um fucking um the video game score we were playing new york at this show and then um someone's like hey guys from rockstar games want you to take you out to, to dinner i was like cool I'm like in my head, I'm like, they probably want a song for the next GTA. How cool. And then in my head, I was like, oh, what if they ask us to do a video game score? And then they did ask us to do a video game score, which is really weird. And that's a fucking sick opportunity because of uh, obvious licensing deals. And your music is very, um, it's perfect for cinematic stuff, atmospheric stuff, video games. Um, have you guys gotten a lot of that? Like, I, I haven't followed too much if like, you guys are getting your stuff in movies or, or commercials, but has it happened yet for you in that sense? Uh, we've done like a lot of sync stuff. There's been some abstract stuff. Uh, we did do a movie that like didn't work out. So it's never, we've actually never officially done a movie. Um, and we haven't taken any other like scoring opportunities with games. Cause it's like, we have a pretty close relationship with Rockstar. We did, no we did another thing for Rockstar, which is like a GTA DLC. <laughs> Uh, and we did this like weird thing for like uh, Lexus and this like live performance. So we've done scoring stuff here and there, but we've never really been able to do like another big narrative project. So we'd really like to do a movie very, very much. Hey, if you guys know any licensing people out there, uh, filmmakers, hit them up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we've got songs in movies, but not songs we've got to compose for movies. I guess actually, never mind. Uh, Atomic Blonde, we covered New Order for the movie. I would have right. never wanted to cover Blue Monday, but I'm not going to not be in a movie. And that was a great movie. So it was cool. I was going to ask you about that. Um, so with that new order cover, which is great, and it's still your most played track, which is no surprise. I mean, that's a classic. Yeah, it's, 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 a lot of people saw the movie too, of course. And that, that was for Atomic Blonde? Yeah, Atomic Blonde. Okay. Um, we had to get some funny comments here I want to get to because uh, when I asked you to describe your sound, I was noticing some amazing descriptions coming by. Sorry. Health is Spice Girls meets Def Leppard. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough, man. I was one that I thought that was funny that made absolutely no, absolutely no sense. All right, I'm going too far back. All right, so we've got another uh, question here from, let's see. We got a question from, uh, okay. Same guy wants to know dream band to tour with, and then we'll move uh, on to somebody else. We'd really love to do nails again now that we have like more songs, like song songs. That'd be kind of nice. We have the perfect like, <laughs> like uh, that'd be really amazing. Uh, we saw uh, oh. We've done shows with them. I would love to do a tour with Def Evan. I think that would that really works. Oh, great guys! Yeah, they were um, on the show a couple weeks ago. 
Um, I don't know. It'd be really cool. There's a lot of great like classic bands. We'd love to open for. I think we'd love to open for like a Deftones. I'm curious how that would how that would go. We'd really love to play with Nails. Uh, we'd love to play. With, I guess Tool. I don't know if that would actually go well though. I don't know if that would be appropriate. But of course you'd like to because it's a band you really like. You know, in terms oh, of big yeah. band. Um, we got it. We did that to our daughters, which would have been number close to number one on my list. Period. Anyway, which is sweet. Um, Deftones would be great. Oh, that's right. That came to uh, Brooklyn to uh, to uh, Brooklyn Steel, right? Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we I, we filmed you. Well, oh yeah, Carter Oh Bader. yeah, hell yeah, yeah. It's a great list. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, well, we filmed you for Revolver at one of those um, shows. Um, which, by the way, if you're just tuning in right now, um, I'm I'm here with John Famiglietti from Health. I hope I said that uh, properly. And if you're just tuning in and you want to watch the uh, the the first half of the interview. The entire thing will be on my personal YouTube channel. If you look up Christopher Enriquez on YouTube, it'll be up there in the next week or two. But it'll also be archived here on the IGTV. And um, did some really cool shit with health for Revolver Magazine. So uh, if you go on Revolver Magazine's YouTube channel and look up health, you'll see some cool shit we did. I, one thing we did with you that I wish we got on video, which, which maybe you could tell me how it went, but uh, we, did a, we did a funny contest where somebody got to win a spa day with health. Oh yeah, that actually went great. It was not weird, and she was like a like a really like nice, uh, cute girl, like a, like totally normal. There's nothing strange. Super <laughs> wholesome. The whole thing was amazing. We all went. We got our fucking nails done. And it was it was like was uncomfortable. Everyone talked. It was actually it was, it was, it was yeah it was, it was nice and wholesome. It was, it was That's just so fun. funny, man. I, I <laughs> it wish wasn't awkward, we, you know. I wish we had that filmed, but I feel like we just at the last minute couldn't figure it out. Also, there was that like death. And like rainstorm any other city in the world would have canceled that show but austin they're like nah fuck it you know yeah yeah we got to do more shit like, that. like that, li lightning crashing it was very memorable because i was, I was shocked all these people would still came to watch in the fucking rain like if that was in la no way that would never happen well it doesn't even doesn't rain like that in la though it's yeah it never cold rains cold. out there which is so yeah. fucking bizarre um so okay so we'll go back to uh, our questions here um get color was your first album uh, you know, I want to get, get through that and then get, uh, get us up to speed. I'm going to go through every album uh, a little bit, but I really want to focus on Slaves of Fear. Um, uh -huh. but can you talk about Get Color, making that? You recorded it at The Smell, right? No, the first one, first album, self titled recorded The Smell. Second one, Get Color, we did the studio in L.A. Uh, at the time, we were really unhappy how it came out, but obviously that was, it was a much more popular album. Uh, and it was cool. All the touring up around that was amazing. And then when you got signed... Well, you would put out Death Magic. You got signed to Loma Vista, yeah. uh, which is a fantastic record label. They have everybody from uh, Marilyn Manson. Uh, I'm going to do a shameless plug who's on the front cover of uh, The Next Revolver, so pick that up. And um, also, um, Show Me the Body, uh, you know, a ton of amazing Ghost. bands. They have Ghost, too. Who's that? They have Ghost, also. They have Ghost, that's right. And they also have... Um, Oh God, this is gonna fucking come to me at some point later on. But one one of my other favorite bands is on um, Loma Vista. But great roster. How did Loma Vista come about? Uh, our manager at the time was like, especially at the time, this is you know streaming hadn't really taken off. The music industry is really really into tumult. Like it labels weren't even like gonna advance money. And he's like, I really want you guys to be this Loma Vista. You know this like they're they're willing to you know take chance on all kinds of different music, all kinds of different genres and shit. And, and they're getting going. And it's really cool. So we had uh, someone from Loma Vista came to the studio and basically, I don't know if Loma Vista was, I won't say who it is, and they're basically listening and they're just like, this sucks. And we're like, all right, <laughs> well, I guess that, that deal's not happening. And then the next day, they're like, you want to get signed? We're like, okay, all right, sure, well, fuck it, you know? I know most of the people at Loma Vista, so I can't, I, I'm so curious, but we don't have to oh, do that. I'll say you later, yeah. I, just, I don't know if it's appropriate, so I don't know if they like, fuck you, dude. So, yeah, yeah. No, that's amazing. Um, and like you said, a great label, uh, Death Magic. Yeah, they've been, they're amazing. They're amazing label. Yeah. Very um, how was how was the reception to uh, you know how how did you feel about the band's trajectory? Because it seems to me, and I could be wrong, that it was really like kind of it was between Death Magic and Slaves of Fear where you really started to gain momentum. Yes. Am I wrong? Yeah, I think uh, the things changed like a lot of like I think Death Magic probably would have been pretty polarizing that we may have lost some of the earlier people, but there's people who stayed through the whole way. And but the type of fan or the way that fa the the fandom or passion post Death Magic is like, even though the early version of the band was so hyped and was like 
all these cool hip festivals and all kinds of like really hip of the moment attention that was very cool uh the every fandom and like fan passion moment post death magic is like times a thousand the 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 how, how much people care more it's a very different fan experience you know it's yeah a, well, the stage show is great, too. I mean, that's a huge part of the band. We're getting some really great comments that I've been skipping, and I apologize. So I'm going to start reading some of them a little bit. But at uh, uh, Dev and W says, if you haven't fucked to get color, you're a virgin. Uh, so that's great. <laughs> that means I I'm a virgin. That. I never put on my own album. That's... <laughs> no, that would be fucking weird. But uh, I will say that Health is a great record to, uh, to have on when, uh, when wild things are happening. Um, so you've, re you've heard it here first from me. Uh, that um, and from at Dev and W, it's a great driving <laughs> record. It's a great nighttime record, and it's a great record to put on while you're getting wild. There you go. Um, and um, and you got some <laughs> you got some fans here at Ramen Slut six 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 says marry me, John. So there you go. <laughs> um, you got some. I do love ramen. Fans. Yes, he loves ramen. Okay, um, okay. We got. Let's talk about Slaves of Fear Volume Four. First of all, why Volume Four? Uh, because of Black Sabbath, you know, ah. we were like, uh, as a kid, you're like, why the fuck is this album called Volume 4? It's a, what a shit title, you know, why is it called Volume 4? But then it's like, uh, for Jake and I was like, uh, I think, I think Master Reality is better, but like, Volume 4 is probably a favorite Sab Sabbath album. We always talk about it and we always listen to it. And we're like, man, if you ever get to the fourth album, what if you just call it Volume 4? And we got to the fourth <laughs> album and then we're like, Volume 4, baby. And then it was like, you can't call Helm Health Volume 4. You can't Google that at all. You can already can't Google your own fucking band name. You can't have volume four. It's never going to work. And so like, ah, shit. And then we're like, all right, what if we had this hilarious ass compound title? It's volume four, Slaves of Fear. This is like way too like this, like com comically literate. And we're like, all right, that's it. That's the title. And I love people, it. That's and, terrible. And, and, we're like, no, no, we love it. We love it. You know? And you also corrected me earlier because and it explains a lot. I thought Get Color was your first album. So it makes a lot of sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So yeah, volume four is the fourth. Got it, got it. And by the way, Master of Reality is definitely my favorite album too. Yeah, that's that's the best one. I think it's the be it's definitely the best one. But I yeah. think I'd listen to Volume Four much more. But Volume Four has funny shit like changes and like, uh, yeah, it's, it's, you know, but it's still amazing, amazing record, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, we could go on and on about that. All, all I'll say is Into the Void. But yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's me too. That's my favorite Sabbath song. It can't yeah. be tough. Are you fucking kidding me? Come on, yeah. man. No, um, well, I think though one of my favorite moments of music ever is the end of Wheels of Confusion. The long, just that long instrumental jam is like one of my favorite pieces of music ever, you know? Yeah. Well, actually, on that note, I'm going to go off script a little bit because uh, I have questions I wrote that I'm reading here. But um, who, are, who are your favorite um, bass players and musicians that inspired your playing? Because, I mean, um, uh, you know, talk about Black Sabbath, Geezer Butler, unbelievable. Yeah. But, you know. So my top bass players, and obviously I'm, it's very clear I'm not much of a player, but um, uh, my top guys were always Geezer Butler, um, what's that called, uh, motherfucker, oh, Chris Squire. Chris Squire was, I used to play Rickenbacker too, and that was like really, really big for me. And then I did love, you know, every bass player, you, you kind of go down this road, you, you love, also love Getty Lee, stuff like that. But uh, but really big, was, for me, really big is uh, Geezer Butler and Chris Squire. Chris Squire for the Rickenbacker. Also love a lot of like 90s guys with uh, edgy bass tones, like um, a uh, dude from Jesus Lizard, David W.M. Stan. Oh my God. That great, me? Like, the, all the guys, these really trebly ass cool tones. And that's more early health. I mean, we were such an avant band, we don't really have riffage. Now for later later health, it's more, I'm just playing a B bass or normal. It's like, this is a bass, do, 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 you know? Yeah, so uh, texture. Dude, fucking um, a bass player in Jesus Lizard. Unfucking believable that fucking. Oh, uh, yeah, so ridiculous. And then, um, you mentioned, uh, it's funny, you're actually like, in the past two weeks, somebody has mentioned Yes, the band Yes, at some point, which yeah, is hilarious. Yeah, I was a because... huge fan of Yes yeah. <laughs> in high school. Dude, I think it was, you... uh, there was a weird thing, I think, because I listened to a lot of Tool, too. Uh, you, there was a, like a weird prog tip in the air, and I got into the Mars Volta, and like there's just a lot of weird progressiveness going on for a second, you know? Dude, if you ever play at St. Vitus, the owner, his favorite uh -huh. band is Yes. And when we opened up, we had a Yes tribute band play. That's amazing. Um, that's hard. That's a hard band to be a tribute band for. It's really hard to play all this shit. Oh, it's it was crazy. To play all this shit. Yeah. yeah, he'll definitely punish the hell out of you. To talk about Yes if you come here play at the venue, but uh, it, it, at the at the expense of uh, lots of free drinks on top of the all, other free drinks, so you'll leave really wasted. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> um, I love that man. A lot of synergy with the uh, with the uh, with the music taste and stuff. When when you were growing up. 
you know, obviously, it sounds like you grew up on some metal and prog rock. What, yes, what, was, what I, was your main thing when you were Well, growing? so in San Diego, um, there's mandatory Metallica okay. at, at, uh, at midnight. And so uh, anytime we'd smoke weed, we'd have to, we'd, we'd get in the car because you had to be there for mandatory Metallica. It was sort of just like part of the uh, weird uh, San Diego ethos. <laughs> that, so that, that was the, uh, the really big thing. Uh, obviously, Black Sabbath, we were just obsessed with Black we were, Anything that was sort of stonery uh when i was in high school and i started to branch out into weirder and weirder stuff so the, all the names that are pretty standard like i'm not gonna blow anyone's mind with our fucking yeah. metal yeah. like metallica black sabbath slayer you know <laughs> uh, absolutely no dude you're not i mean look i all, I'm, uh, all the all those fucking obscure metal bands play at saint vitus all the time and i don't ever try to you know mask like i'm into stuff i'm not into i grew up on thrash metal all the mm -hmm. fucking the big four and i and, and all the fucking typical stuff but that's timeless music um you're into a lot of different stuff obviously and you did a, and some transitioning here you collaborated with a lot of uh, varied artists youth code horror shout out to horror i gotta get them on the show those are good friends of mine and um, yeah yeah great dudes awesome yeah. dudes actually all of it we have a lot of mutual friends i love sarah from youth code and yeah she's e. awesome. and horror she's and ghost uh, man yeah. oh yeah yeah. All, yeah these are all great people great all great people, people. um what what are some of uh, your favorite moments uh, collaborating with some of the folks that I just mentioned? I mean, all of these songs have come out really, really good. All the ones that are more fun that we're able to get in the same room, of course, but there's, they've still turned out great. You know, Perturbator was done completely over the email. I think it's one of the best ones. So um, really go each way. I mean, uh, Ghost Vane was, he kind of, the kid blew me away with his fucking talent. I think it's because he comes from a metal background. He has such fucking chops. He like wrote the rap did it one take it was fucking flawless and then he just doubled it again and then he was done and we're like holy shit man yeah you know, yeah it's just like it's sort of that that level of musicianship or what do you want to however you want to call it you know fucking chops he and he just put out um uh, i shouldn't call him by his real name but he's actually my friend's little cousin no oh, really <laughs> yeah actually <laughs> nice. funny enough right before i saw you at um at backstage i went up to him and called him by his real name and he just looked up at me and like everything changed. He's like, you know, my cousin. And he just, he was like, how? Like, it was such a cool experience. But he, uh, he just put out a, a, a metal uh, EP that's fucking phenomenal. Yeah, he's putting out about like an EP a week. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, there's probably more that I don't know about since then. But he did put out a really good metal EP. And I think that was, you know, it was a good way to get everyone to shut the fuck up. You know, we got all these purists. That's a tough thing with metal. It's like, Oh, it's not real. It's not this. It's like, yo, it's 2020 punk rock and heavy metal and all this music does not sound the same. Like fucking yeah. Pantera doesn't sound like Black Sabbath. Get over it. Well, yeah. I think also there's sort of a, a compression of history where it's sort of like, uh, yo, man, this boat's getting smaller. We better team up right now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I love that. There's a camaraderie in the scene, which is yeah, great. Yeah. Uh, less competition and more camaraderie, but also more diversity. Um, do you have any future collabs that you can talk about that might be happening? Yeah, I mean, shit, I don't want to uh, spoil them, but we're gonna we're dropping the the sort of album version of the collabs, the first installment. We're gonna do two, but we have three more collabs coming that are pretty fucking hot, uh, and and definitely some really good is on the way. I think we're gonna go for the future ones. We're gonna go do some heavier ones. Everyone really loves the Full of Hell one. Loves us working with like. Oh pretty shit! Shout out to Full of Hell, yeah. Yeah. And like those are more challenging to do, but like it's it's pretty sweet. I think we'll get really excited about the the team up, you know. It's yeah, I love that, man. We're we're in the age of um of a lot of of the uh, collabs that have been happening in the, uh, you know, I should mention like Revolver when we rebranded and started covering all, all the bands, including yours that we mentioned, took a lot of heat from the um from like the traditional metalheads, and I think that now we've kind of gotten a new audience and. Uh, bands like Full of Hell and Youth Code and Horror and Ghost Man and Health, all these bands are talking about, is all, uh, uh, to go back to the camaraderie, it's cool because it's different styles of music coming together, doing something where their fans and your fans and vice versa, because other bands are doing it too, are discovering shit. Um, that they yeah, have no the age of, age of streaming, it's the, the most effective thing any of us can do in terms of like reaching reaching other people and reaching other like-minded people and like, having something happen it, it feels feels exciting and, and pretty fun right now and, and like you know a lot of things are different about music now but i bet like in 1980 whatever people would be like praying that's like oh i bet there will be a computer one day and, and all the music will be on there and it's only ten dollars a month and you could release something in three weeks you know some shit like that someone <laughs> about that in the punk days you know oh totally man um 
hit you got hip hop obviously uh with horror and ghost man is hip hop a, a big part of your life as well yeah of course i mean we're not uh we're really taking everything in as you hear you can hear with all the records like there's um there's a lot of influence from just all kinds of music and like a lot of inf like really abstract influences for a lot of health songs are like literally just like some shit on the radio or some shit i heard some rave or whatever so especially with anything that's like heavy or, or exciting or even not or just kind of kind of cool production or goofy shit like we're, we're trying to take influence from whatever you know so, yeah yeah so definitely like i'm uh so like you know when the life was normal i would go out to bars i'd go out to go some nightclub or some bullshit i hear whatever music's around i'm not like in some weird ass in sort of life and you know i'd listen to everything on spotify check out what's new or whatever you know yeah keeping an open mind and um and then that's why the music you make is what it is it's interesting uh i was saying the intro forward thinking and progressive stuff um so uh i'm gonna take some more questions because believe it or not we have 17 questions in there i can't get to all of them we're at the home stretch we have nine minutes left um so just so you know john um huh. the uh instagram kicks us off so at some point i might cut you off if i have to don't worry that's so, fine like, yeah and if I anyone suppose... really has a burning question you can go to the health discord and i'll probably be on there so hell yeah man yeah. Um, i'm not really leave, leaving the house too much nowadays <laughs> um all right let's kick this one here uh from at peter de buddha any potential film scores trent Reznor, trent Reznor style uh y yes we'd love to do that more than anything we're working on something now it's kind of indie who knows and that'll see the light of day and it might be a lot more a lot more maybe more ambient though obviously like you know with trent Atticus, a lot of those scores are not not not, not like ultra dark or whatever just sort of more ambient stuff like that but yeah obviously whatever we're going to do has to be appropriate for the film but definitely we're going to be scoring as much as we can sick all right so we got at joseph lee what's your favorite band i know this guy i'm not answering this okay Fuck you, <laughs> isaiah <laughs> shot that why haven't they performed slaves of fear live yet we did we did it a few times on the daughter's tour it's just it's very hard to get work in live and it, it, it felt, didn't didn't feel like we uh, killed it or anything. So it, it's kind of hard because that it was it was put together kind of pretty unnaturally in the studio, you know. That's my favorite song off the record, the title track. But I know what you mean in terms of uh, pulling something off live versus on record. It can be a bit daunting. Um, yeah, yeah. We haven't cracked the code on that one. Great song. Um, okay, who's this here? Coming on to Disney Bull DVD. What is this guy's name? Coming soon to Disney DVD. Any more adult swim work coming uh if they call us anytime i mean they are they're all, they're super cool adult swim is really like really amazing uh like curator of so many different styles of music and giving all kinds of cool shit they did show full of hell all kinds of great bands you know shout out uh, to adult swim yeah shit's fucking rad man um earth one intruders is the song severin named after bill paxton's character from near dark no it is named after our old booking agent in europe <laughs> but not the song's not really about him, but it's just a great name. Also, you know, uh, Velvet Underground. Seven, seven, seven. There you go. There you go. Um, great question from Manic Expressive. What was your first exposure to electronic and industrial music? I was actually going to ask that and forgot, so thank you. Uh, okay, I was a really big fan of Big Black in middle school, high school, in terms of like me being into it. Obviously, everyone I heard, you know, Nine Inch Nails and stuff on the radio. But I think the close first, like, I guess, industrial band that I, like, bought a CD of is Big Black, if they count. I'm pretty sure Big Black counts, though, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, of uh, course. That, that'd be the first. I don't know about that, that, that being electronic. Well, uh, I mean, they were part of that scene. You know, if you what's that uh, record label, uh, Wax Tracks? They were part yeah. of that scene. They were on Touch and Go, but it was that Chicago, you know. Chicago, yeah. Yeah, 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 of, like, industrial yeah. rock music, you know. Yeah. Um, six, 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 at 666 Kings. A game you wish you made the score for it. Uh, well, there's a lot of great games I love, but they have great scores. So I wouldn't want to replace their score because I like the game. Are you a big uh, video game guy? Yeah, yeah, a lot. Of, I really like uh, I really like really good AAA games. I love Dark Souls, um, RPGs. I don't know. I really like I like good video games. Most video games I don't care for a lot. I like these the, the really nice ones. The ones worth your time. Like a Dark I'm not, Souls. I'm not a video game guy, and um... Uh, t totally not flexing right now, but Sergio from Deftones is a good friend of mine, and he plays Animal Crossing live every night on Twitch. That's and, adorable. 
he wanted Revolver to give him a show where people <laughs> could play Animal Crossing with him. He's telling me a lot of bands that um, that people and well-known bands that play Animal Crossing. I don't know if that's something that you do. I don't play Animal Crossing, but I think you should do the show. Yeah, I mean, I anything uh, with the guys from Deftones. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, we got a couple. What's your favorite country you ever played a show at? Oh, I don't know. Um, they're all great. They're, they're all great. great. Yeah. All right. Well, so you want... United States, obviously. You know, it's the most fun to tour the U.S. Though I've had, we've ever had pretty amazing experiences, though, in, in, in Europe and Australia and China and whatever, and in South America. It's all, it's all great. The lifestyle is great. Hope that, we're, hope that we hope that you and all of us can get back to, to do it. Yeah, that'd be amazing. It would be nice. At Eric Perez, the great question because the artwork for your records is fantastic. Who creates the album art? It looks very scientific. Uh, me, and that's that's kind of why. Uh, lately, though, I've been uh, uh, working with someone which is cool. My buddy Joe, who texted before, but yeah, um, uh, I've been doing the artwork since the beginning. No shit, John. Uh, do you sell uh, any prints or anything like that? No. Would people buy that? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? Come on, yeah. Matt. You're, short, you're shorting yourself, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not into the art thing, but sure. If someone would buy it, I would sell it. You well, know? We should talk sometime. We, um, we're doing a lot of uh, Revolver artwork exclusive to bands and doing stuff, so maybe we could have that conversation. But um, St. Vitus does collabs uh, where people, different people from bands recreate the logo, and we had um, Anthony from Cult Leader redesigned the St. Vitus logo and we did a, a, a collab on merch, but I did not know that. Your artwork is phenomenal. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I, and you got some people saying that they absolutely would buy print your prints more than everybody's saying it. So there okay. you go. Yeah. All so right. You got another career that you're, uh, that you should, that you can capitalize. I'll do anything for money. Yeah. Everybody's saying I'll buy it. <laughs> um, drawing realm. Would you ever want to collab with the soft moon on a track? Of course. I love soft moon. Come on there. Um, we're <laughs> three minutes left. We'll start. We'll go with, uh, with the, oh, I like this question, actually. Uh, same guy playing anything good right now. What are you listening to? Oh, did he mean a video game or music? Uh, uh, well, you know, why don't we go with both? Okay. Uh, I'm playing uh, Last of Us 2, but I stopped, so I need to finish it. But I'm enjoying it quite, right. quite a bit. Um, what was the last thing I was listening to in my Spotify? It was... It was the fuck was it? You know, it's weirdly in uh, in quarantine. I've just been uh, playing like Judas Priest and Scorpions. <laughs> wow, <laughs> isn't that funny? How you know you people? I, you, you listen to music that does, you don't want to listen to music that sounds like your band because it's like yeah, all the time. Well, yeah, like there has been a ton of releases. I was like checking out. There's a new Youth Code song I liked. I like the new Full of Hell. Um, I'm trying to think of like a record that came out this year that I was listening a lot to. It's been really strange though. Like the records have been coming out and like not a, not a ton of records have been, have been coming out. Uh, I checked out the Lamb of God one. I checked out uh, pretty much anything mm -hmm. that might come up in my like release radar. Well, like Taylor Swift is like one of the biggest stars in the world. Her album came out and because you no, know, I haven't left my house. I haven't heard a second of it. I just saw one meme <laughs> making fun of it and like, that's it. And it's just gone. It's just really strange. We got a we got a minute and forty seconds left, and I see a count. Oh yeah, sorry. Right. I'm listening to the WAP song, to the the pussy song. <laughs> so um, that's actually the last thing I listened to. <laughs> I, I don't even know what that is off the check. It's, it's, it's great. It's like because it feels like the flies coming to normal. People are actually talking about a hit song that has everybody talking it hasn't happened for like a, for a really long time because of quarantine. So like it feels like the most normal thing to be talking about this pussy song. Um, well, I wanted to uh, thank I want to thank you before we get kicked off for doing this with me. Really appreciate it. Awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah. Any uh, final words or uh, shout outs or announcements or anything? Uh, well, we have a record coming really soon. We haven't officially announced it, but you heard it here first. And then if you want to come hang out, uh, we'll be in the health discord all quarantine and beyond. Hell yeah, man. And uh, John, thank you again. And everybody watching, if you missed the first half, it'll be on my YouTube channel and it'll be on um, the St. Vitus IGTV. John, send my best to the rest of the band. Cool. Stay safe. And I hope I see you at a show or somewhere soon, man. I really hope so, too. That would be amazing. All right. Peace out, brother. See ya. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. This has been another episode of Age of Quarantine. And um, we love you all. Be good to each other. Stay safe and support good music. Peace out.